Hello everyone, this is Bradley. So today we're going to make this rope animation. This animation is inspired from the one that people made in Cinema 4D. Uh, I may use a little bit different methods, but uh, we will see. So let's just start. So here we in Blender, let's go to Node and create a plane and jump to Node 3, lock the interface. I'm going to use the presets as always. You can download them for free from the link in the description. So let's take a curve linear. Basically what we're going to do is very similar to what we have done in DNA tutorial. So let's take a point instance, take a curve circle. Uh, take the resolution to 4 and plug that to instance. Uh, later I need to align all this kind of circle properly. So let's take the alignment on splines. So we take the rotations. So now everything has been flipped to desired space. I need to take a combined ruler so that I can rotate for each one using the float range. Plug the value into these rotation to rotation. Uh, in this case, I think I'm going to use this step. So let's increase this step. Then you can see every circle has been rotated with a certain degree. Just for a quick result, I'm going to take the helical connection. Uh, as explained in the DNA tutorial, for helical connection, plug the instances, plug the points, plug the another curve. So now you have this result. Let's take this as a count. So now you, we have this kind of helices being created. Uh, we can turn down this step. Okay. Uh, for better visualization, I'm going to bevel the curve which is basically just the curve to match and turn down this radius okay next we are going to do the animation animation is mostly based on the directional fold so we need to select uh, an empty object so let's take this controller take the fold into scale uh, it will be better if we are going to take a map range instead of using this minimum and maximum because this fold will be used in multiple places and actually immediately you can actually see the effect, but although this effect is not uh, what I'm looking for. So here, let's do this. Take the minimum to maybe four, and the maximum to be as small as possible so that it forms a loop as this fourth is traveling along. If you scale up, then this gradation is much softer. And you can see this animation, which is very kind of nice. Another part of this animation is that I do not want to see these ropes before they finally converge into this point. So here what I'm going to do is to take a set position after this instance and then let's take a mix vector, plug the fourth into factor, plug the vector into the offset. So just by increasing this x value, then we now having this kind of a weird kind of shockwave, whatever stuff. And then finally they converge into the point. Okay, so basically the animation is done here, but there is a one kind of problem that I do not like is when they're actually converging. So if you take the camera into the other side, then you can actually see how this rope is being converged. And I do not like this helices being shown in this place because it's more kind of a spoil the entire effect. Okay. So this is a, an additional step, um, but I really think it's worth that. So here, what we do is I'm going to take a mix of float and plug the fourth into the factor, plug the value into B. And in float A, I'm going to take a mass node to subtract a certain value so maybe 500 so now it looks kind of straight okay and then now if you try to play this animation you can see that the rope is rotating as they are converging into these ropes so I think this is kind of more realistic you can feel like that they are really rotating to form the loop instead of it was originally set before I move on, I would like to talk about the several settings uh, within our current setup. So if you increase the count, then you increase the resolution of all these our splines. 
it does not have a very strong impact to our setup currently because they looks very smooth right now. Uh, a side effect is that uh, because we're using the step mode, so that if you increase the count, then more rotation will be added. So now we need to change a little bit more tweakings, for example, minus 1000 so that it goes back to straight line. So these are the things that you need to take caution on. Another thing is this resolution. So the more resolution you add it, the more ropes you have. And the radius, I do not recommend you to change. Uh, this helical connection, because we do not have a loop, so this is a manual looping, which also means that it can only take up for 30 resolutions. If you would like to have more ropes, then you have to add you basically have to duplicate this node and connect everything again. Okay. In reality, uh, I think the rope is much more complex than just uh, this kind of stuff. So you need more details. In Cinema 4D, I think people did with using shader. Here, I don't think EV will work in such a kind of case. You can use a cycle, but I do not like using shader anyway. So I'm going to create a geometry, basically add more ropes on each ropes already. This setup is very specific, so I do not have a preset as simple as this helical connection. So we have to do everything from scratch. The principle, however, is very similar to this helical connection. So let's go. The basic principle is that we take a separate geometry and we separate based on the spline. So let's turn off this control. Take the index and take a field compare. So we are always selecting the spline which has an index 0. So this is the spline and if I increase to 1, then I select another, increase to 2, I select the third, increase to 3, then I select the fourth, and we only have uh, we have seven spline. Okay, let's take that to four. Uh, but basically, this is a kind of concept. So there is no forces splines available. Okay. And we are going to run this loop. So we take this into a group node by hitting Control G. And we are going to construct this as a loop. And uh, this kind of preset, generally speaking, is a parallel loop. So we have to connect, connect and finally join everything. But consider if you're having a lot of settings, it's very difficult to just uh, plug all these kind of uh, wires. So I always construct a loop in terms of a serious loop, in, even though they're not a serious loop. It's kind of very difficult to explain, um, but we are not going to have any loop function until 3.2, so we have to do everything by hand. So here there's a preset which is called the loop index, just to make our life a little bit convenient. So let's take a geometry, and I need to take a index. Okay, so one geometry is going to be the loop input. Um, let's take a loop input. And at the end, we're going to take a loop output and create another geometry. So this geometry is going to connect this geometry so that the same geometry can be used in the other case. Let's plug this index into the compare. So every loop we are comparing with a different index. We also need to output this index and what's in this group node is basically just a mass node to add this index plus one every time. So now within this loop, we have a single spline. What I'm going to do is just take the point instance, take this uh, separated geometry. and repeat what we have just done to create all these kind of spirals. So take a curve circle. This time I'm going to take a four as well. I need to join geometry. 
and join our newly created curves into this geometry. We need a proper alignment, so alignment on splines. We need to create a, let's decrease the radius and take a float range. Combine XYZ values, values. And you can control this kind of value. You can also control the using the combined ruler. So you can increase the value. This is basically how I build this uh, head core connection. Basically the same process that you select every point, separate, connect, finally you get everything being done here. And this is just a single unit of the loop, which means you need to duplicate that. Uh, let's use the geometry actually. Uh, where is our geometry? Uh, yes, we should actually use the geometry. And for the loop input, we finally connect to. And we do not need this linkage. So once we construct this, we form a single unit and we can bevel it. And by looping this, so let's name that as a wire. Loop. We basically duplicate because we have four units in total, so we duplicate this for four times and duplicate, duplicate. The reason I'm doing this in series instead of duplicate in this way is that I can hit F, F. So finally everything being connected to you. So now we have a much more complex loop being formed. So now this is how it has been done. Okay. You can tweak the more settings inside the loop if you wish, but I do not recommend to plug anything to these kind of group input and output because Otherwise, each group node will have a different settings. It will be a very chaotic situation. Okay. But well, basically, this is kind of idea. Ne uh, next step finally is to um, deform this rope. Now this is a straight line. What if I would like to deform this rope? And this is a very tricky step. Basically, it's it's kind of very difficult consideration and my method is basically use the curve modifier however in 3.0 we do not have curve modifier so I made a curve deform node uh, in 3.0 node this node will be implemented which has the same name as the curve deform basically that's the idea you can use this node but uh, in this case I will just use this curve modifier which is uh, easier to use because I do not want to explain. So we create a curve. And you draw whatever stuff, maybe this line. And you just use the curve modifier. And finally you play our controller. Then it's to form the rope on our curve. So the last issue that we encounter is that there is no noise. If you would like to add any noise, because we are using external modifier, then you add another new geometry nodes. Here, these are all meshes, so we can directly take a set of position. And let's take a noise 3D. Let's combine X, Y, Z. Or you can plug the color into the offset directly. Just to make sure the frequency is kind of low. So by changing the evolution, then you're wiggling this rope while it's forming the rope. Okay, 
So basically, this is kind of concept. So the benefit of having a curve deform modifier inside a node tree is that you do not need a second node tree. But uh, I do not want to explain this node in this tutorial. So let's just uh, forget about that. Uh, and basically, this is kind of idea. You basically just uh, animate this empty and also animate this noise evolution. Another way is you animate this kind of vector, subject uh, position translation, which is basically just the position vector mass. So one node to replace two nodes in addition to more, more functions, but that's another story. So basically these are the concepts. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.